Okay, today we're going to look at mix mode S parameters, and it's going to give us an opportunity to use the transformer that we made in the last video, uh, and also the transformer that we laid out a few videos ago. So if you recall, we laid out this interstage transformer a couple of videos ago. It had a primary coil and then a secondary coil that had a center tap on it. We did an EMX simulation and extracted a circuit model. Now the circuit model assumed uh, perfect symmetry, so this will be a purely symmetric circuit model. We also extracted S parameter data in the form of this schematic underscore import view. I'm going to add that transformer. Do this schematic. And I'm also going to add the ideal transformers that we just fabric or that we just designed in the last video. Now, to make them fairly ideal, we need a large winding inductance. I'm going to make it 400 microhenries, and we need uh, an ideal coupling factor of one. Now I'm going to place one transformer at the input, and I'm going to place one transformer at the output. Now, in an ideal world, this transformer would be perfectly symmetric, uh, and if we put a differential signal into it, only a differential signal would come out. But in reality, asymmetries in the layout of the transformer mean that we get sometimes mode conversion. In other words, we can put a differential signal into the transformer and get a common mode or single-ended signal at the output of the transformer. Let's go ahead and wire everything together and take a look. So here we're going to tie the differential outputs or differential secondaries of the ideal transformers to our device under test, which is the simulated transformer that we made. And now I'm going to add some ports from analog lib. So I'm going to add a port on the input side, port one, a port on the output side, port two, and then a port on the input side, input common mode side, port three, and output common mode side, port four. Okay, so I've tied ports one and two to the primaries of these ideal transformers, and ports three and four I've tied to the center tap of the secondary of the transformers. Now, ideally, if this transformer, uh, the, the device under test here, were perfectly symmetric, we'd put a differential uh, signal in via this transformer uh, that would convert the single-ended port one signal uh, to a differential signal here. The differential signal would trans transit through the transformer, uh, go through this ideal transformer and be converted back to a single ended signal where it would go to port two. In reality, some asymmetry in the transformer means that not all of the differential signal goes through the transformer as a differential signal. Some of it's reflected back uh, and will be converted uh, by, uh, and, and will be converted to a common mode signal uh, that will be absorbed in port three here. Some of it might go through the transformer uh, be converted to a common mode signal that would be absorbed in port four here. We can look at an example of what we call mixed mode S parameters here, where we can put a differential si uh, signal uh, or a common mode signal in into the transformer and, and we could make some observations. So for instance, if we put a purely differential signal in, we can measure the reflection coefficients at the port one and port two, and we can also measure the gains from port one to port two and port two to port one. So we call this upper left-hand portion of the matrix, the differential in to differential out matrix. Similarly, we can put a common mode signal in and measure only the impact on the common mode signal. So we can put a common mode signal at port three, a common mode signal at port four, and we can measure 
uh, both the reflection coefficient at port three and four, and also how much signal is transitioned between port three and port four. Now these will show up as SCC11, SCC22, SCC12, and SCC21. This lower right hand corner is called the comma mode in, comma mode out uh, uh, portion of the mixed mode S parameter matrix. Finally, we can also put a differential signal in and measure how much signal comes out of the comma mode ports. And we can also put a comma mode signal in and measure how much signal comes out of the differential ports. Looking at that, the differential mode parameters are going to be driven by port one and port two. So we'll put a signal in at port one, measure what comes out of port two, put a signal in at port two, measure what comes out of port one. For the comma mode portion, we can put a signal in at port three and measure what comes out of port four, put a signal in at port four and measure what comes out of port three. And then for the differential to comma mode portion, we can put a signal in at port one and measure what comes out at port two, or sorry, port three and port four. Likewise, we can do the same thing going in the opposite direction. We can also put a signal in at port one and measure what comes out of port uh, one, what comes out of port two. Uh, this would be the comma mode to differential uh, conversion. If our transformer is ideal, we'll only see the differential mode. If the transformer is not ideal, we will see some common mode behavior. Now, before I forget, I need to add grounds to all the wires that are dangling here. All right, so now our circuit is done and ready to simulate. So, forgot one thing, we do need to ground the input primary side. All right, and now we should be done. All right, so let's go ahead and open up uh, or create a Maestro view. Now I'm gonna make one change uh, to the environment options uh, here. We didn't create a config view in this case, uh, otherwise I would have uh, made the change there, but I'm going to change and add schematic underscore import to the switch view list. Uh, this means if we have a schematic import uh, in, our, uh, in our library, it will simulate that before it will simulate schematic. Uh, this just more or less means that it's going to simulate the schematic underscore import view rather than the schematic view of our transformer. And this is important because when we extracted the model for the schematic view, we told it explicitly that it was a symmetric model. Uh, and this means that we should have very little uh, mode conversion. Now, our layout is still very symmetric, uh, but uh, nonetheless, we expect that the uh, S parameter simulation will be a little bit more imperfect than the model uh, because we get, we enforced on the model that it, it was a, a symmetric model. All right, we're gonna go in, uh, make sure that we have our save options pointing us to our temporary directory so that we don't fill up our home directory. And that should be all we need to worry about in this particular case, since this is a relatively small simulation. Let's add an analysis, SP. We're gonna go onto the simulation and select the ports in order. Port one, port two, port three, port four. And we're gonna simulate from 50 gigahertz to 70 gigahertz. Now, remember when we designed this transformer, it was for a 60 gigahertz mode. Now, when I run the simulation, we do have an option for mix mode in and out. I'm going to leave this as single-ended because I've used the transformers in order to do my mix mode simulation. Uh, what this uh, mixed in and out option does is it allows you just to use the, uh, the, the ports. Uh, but for the time being, we're going to just stick with single-ended. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save the view. I'm going to run the simulation.
Okay, now the way that I've set this uh, simulation up and the labels that I've put on the ports uh, is going to make it easy for us to plot our uh, S parameters. So uh, S11, uh, S12, S21, and S22 are going to be our differential mode uh, S parameters. So I'm just going to plot these rectangular on the same plot. S11, S22, S12, and S21. S12 and S21 should be the same because the circuit is reciprocal. Uh, you'll notice that S11 and S22 are a little bit different uh, because it's not symmetric. The one thing you notice is that this transformer isn't necessarily well matched. Remember, this might have been a resonant transformer, which means that we need to add a capacitor in order to resonate it at a particular frequency of operation. Um, but these are the differential mode S parameters. Now, if we were to look at S13, S14, S4, S24, uh, and S23, those will be our differential N to common mode out parameters. So first, here, let's go ahead and plot these on a different window. All right, so we want S13. S14. S23. And S24. Now, what we see here are the differential in to common mode out parameters. And ideally, if this is a if this is a well-designed transformer, these should be pretty small. You can see here that they're both uh, that, that all the parameters are under minus 170 dBs. Uh, this is a very small number, which means that we are getting very little uh, mode conversion, which is what we would expect. Now we're going to plot the common mode in to come to differential mode out parameters. So I'm going to put a new sub window in. These are going to be S31, S32, and S41 and S42. All right, as we expected with the differential to common mode, these are the common mode to differential parameters, and they should also be small if the transformer is very symmetric. Here you can see they're all below minus 170 dB, exactly what we'd expect. Finally, we're going to look at the common mode to common mode parameters. And add another sub window. These common mode to common mode parameters are going to be S33, S44, and then S43, and S34. Okay. S33 and S44 are more or less like reflection coefficients, uh, so uh, we don't want uh, for the common mode signals, we want them to be purely reflected. Here we can see that these values are nearly zero, which means that almost all of the signal is reflected. And then for the uh, gain uh, uh, in the circuit, uh, S43 and S34, this is the common mode in to common mode out and common mode out to common mode in gain. And here we can see that these are both uh, less than minus 200 dB. Uh, we expect them to be small. So here we're looking uh, at our mixed mode S parameters. Uh, we can see indeed that the transformer uh, does keep most of its signal in the differential mode, which is good. Uh, it's not well matched right now because it is a resonant transformer. We would need to match it, but at least none of the signal is getting transferred, or at least very little of the signal is getting transferred into the common mode. And very little of the common mode signal is getting transferred into the differential mode, uh, which is important as well. 
So with that, we're going to go ahead and stop uh, for the day and we'll look at something new next time.